This is a Skyrim before Ink first met the page, a time before the histories of song and memory were committed to the leather-bound tomes of knowledge the truth seekers hold so dear. This is a primordial world, before the count of years and errors, a time where the mythic meets the material. Historians cite the beginning of recorded history 4,450 years ago with the founding of the Cameron dynasty in Valenwood, but this Skyrim is long before then. Arguably, even with the absence of concrete dates, the latter periods of the Morethic era still bear some form of tangible record, and so we must look further still into the early Morethic, or the Dawn era before it, which in all intellectual honesty is hardly a period of time, but rather an amalgamation of various creation stories with which some have tried to form a coherent series of events, but at the end of the day, the Dawn era results in the creation of this world that we know as Nern. So when I say prehistoric, I mean the early to middle Morethic era, a period which begins with the untamed Tamriel dominated by beast folk and wilds, and ends with the establishment of the first Tamrielic elven powers. Before I paint you a picture of prehistoric Skyrim, I'm going to have to operate under a certain pretense that is a matter for debate, and that is the existence of humans on Tamriel before the elves. Traditionally, this is heresy, so don't tell the Thalmor where I live, but I believe there is a very good reason to take such a claim very seriously. The book Frontier, Conquest and Accommodation, A Social History of Cyrodiil casts doubt on the claim that Isgrimor was the first human settler, mostly due to archaeological evidence of human settlement in Hammerfell, High Rock and Cyrodiil dating back as far as 800 to 1000 years before the First Era which would be the late Morethic era. For reference, estimations place the return of Isgrimor roughly 500 years before the first era begins. Various excerpts from the Pocket Guides to the Empire suggest that Isgrimor's return was one of the last in a long tradition of migrations from Atmora, which is possible. However, there is archaeological evidence found in the Shadowfen region of Black Marsh that suggests that there were human cultures that in fact lived on Tamriel long before anyone once thought. A silver medallion of Kothringi origin, which depicts Clavicus Vile, was discovered in such a region and it dates back to the early Morethic era. The Kothringi were a race of silver-skinned humans that inhabited Black Marsh alongside the Argonians until their eventual demise in the Second Era. And additionally, there has been a statue found of Sithis, depicted as the ancient Argonians would envision him, but the craftsmanship appears to be of Kothringi make, suggesting cultural exchange between the two groups. This evidence places the Kothringi on Tamriel in the early Morethic Era, predating Aldmeri colonization. Now, to me, this suggests that humans more broadly have existed on Tamriel for far longer than many historians may think. We would consider these human tribes to be Nedic, which essentially functions as a catch-all term for the diverse human tribes of Tamriel that do not share a direct link with Atmora or Yakuda, and I firmly believe this to be the case. Certain scholars have also levied similar criticisms at the Out of Atmora theory, decrying it as imperial propaganda that aims to create a shared Nordic fatherland origin for the purposes of political unification. I also believe the indigenous need theory creates a more cohesive and believable history, one where the arrival of the elves and their more advanced civilizations changed their fates forever. For example, the Dereni Elves conquered High Rock and subjugated the Nedic tribes and interbred resulting in the formation of the Breton race. The Aelids brutally enslaved entire tribes of men in Cyrodiil, and the Duraki Nedes, largely free from elven interference, flourished in the Deathlands, which is the northeastern parts of modern Hammerfell. The reverse scenario, where powerful elven civilizations allow many small tribes of Nedes to get entrenched deep within their lands before enslaving them generations afterwards, just sounds a little odd to me. With this pretense understood, where Nedic humans are indigenous to Tamriel, or at the very least, their existence there predates elven arrival, then we can make a good attempt at envisioning a prehistoric Skyrim. One of the most recognizable scenes of modern day Skyrim is that of a giant herding his mammoths across frostbitten tundras of Whiterun, framed by the endless mountains in the background. Interestingly, in prehistoric Skyrim, Giants, with a theorized Atmoran origin, may not have been there at all at this time, and instead, the mammoths roamed free in their own herds, hunted by Nedic tribesmen who competed with the fearsome saber cats for their quarry. Remember, 
This is a time well before the written word, before snow elves and giants, before dragon cults and nords, and there are several pieces of evidence that point to Nidic inhabitants of a prehistoric Skyrim. Two Nidic dueling swords have been recovered from the possession of a Draga lord named Haltaf, who was in a subterranean lair. These swords could have been possibly claimed through some shared heritage, or perhaps taken by Nords during their conquest of the Nidic tribes here, or maybe it was a gift. Regardless, the craftsmanship is definitely Nidic, and it indicates quite a degree of skill and metallurgy, despite what would be considered a savage and more primitive society, even relative to other needs. There is perhaps reason for this. Standing perched over the vast tundra plains is this great statue of a bird that nests a forge in the shade of its wings. This is the Skyforge, and in modern day, it has become associated with the special steel that it can produce, but the Skyforge is not of Nordic design. In fact, it far predates their arrival. The Songs of Return tell of the Nords who found this forge unclaimed by the Elves. When they asked of the nature of the Skyforge, their Elven captives only said that it was older than the Elves themselves, a remnant of the God's effort to render a paradise on Mundus. With this considered, then the early Nidic tribes of this very same area may have very well learnt how to use the Skyforge, and perhaps this is how they created the ancient Nidic swords, and it explains why this group in particular had uniquely skillful metallurgy despite their quote, barbarous and savage society. While the Skyforge was not necessarily built by early Needs, it still is a possibility. Consider that the Keptu people, a Needic tribe with the help of Hercene, built the Bloodroot Forge, and they too were considered to have metallurgy quite advanced for their barbarous and savage dispositions. And also there are many megalithic structures all throughout Tamriel made of stone, and there are good reasons to believe that these were constructed by somewhat primitive Needic tribes in the early days of the Marethic Era. Many Nidic cultures we know about seem to have a reverence for the stars. The Duraki Nids, the Perenna tribe, the Men of Gi, stargazers and worshippers all. And let us not forget that the Duraki Nids were incredible stonemasons, and one could assume that this skill was honed by their culture for generations prior. So it is not a stretch to assume that early Nidic tribes began with worship or at least fascination with the stars and then also constructed many of the megalithic structures we find throughout Tamriel, such as the Munda Stones, Standing Stones of Skyrim, and the Doom Stones of Cyrodiil, all different representations of the 13 identifiable star signs. Let's not forget Stonehenge and Newgrange were constructed thousands of years ago on Earth so I doubt it's a stretch to say that Nidic tribes with gods and magic could not construct similar levels of stone creations. So stoneworking and star worshipping were likely prevalent with the earliest Nidic tribes and perhaps some degrees of metallurgy. But the Nidic lifestyle of Skyrim seemed rather reminiscent of a hunter-gatherer, and I would say that is largely because of their environment. Unlike the later Nords who would come from Atmora bearing innate resistances to the cold, the needs were likely not as hardy, and additionally we must consider that the Atmorans had learnt how to grow crops in such adverse frozen environments, whereas the needs migrating from the south likely did not. Nidic tribes lived in many places, such as Black Marsh, the Nibane Valley, the Colovian Highlands, Hammerfell and High Rock, as well as Skyrim. But Skyrim seems to have been the least populated of those regions, and for good reason. It's extremely cold, very high altitude, there are plentiful predators such as saber cats, trolls and more, and ultimately it's a mixed bag of adversity, so life for these early Nidic tribes would seemingly be hardy, brutal, and largely nomadic, perhaps with small settlements as could be the case with the Skyforge at times. There is evidence for Nidic tribes hunting in the Lion's Den, a valley in the rift named so because it is a breeding ground for mountain lions which were hunted by Marethic era Nidic tribes for their furs. So we can see that the needs of Skyrim spread as far as the rift, and if we travel back west, we can identify a Nidic tribe called the Men of Kreeth, and even further towards the Reach, we would have the Nidic progenitors of the modern day Reach folk. Though we'll get to them soon enough because I have a theory about the early Nidic religion. You know about Falkreath, right? The cute little city tucked away in the beautiful forest of Skyrim South. Well, by the time we come to the year 808 of the First Era, 
We have records of the forest king Kestik, who was likely a leader of a Nidic tribe named the Men of Kreeth. Now, this tribe exists over 2,000 years later than the period that we are discussing, but it does lay down the precedent for Nidic inhabitation of this area, implying that they likely had ancestors in these same regions. And at the very least, we have evidence to believe that human tribes populated areas from the Rift through to Falkreath and through to the Reach. But you must remember, this is not the Reach you know, nor the Forsworn upstarts you are thinking about. The Nidic inhabitants of this area, the Proto-Reachmen if you will, would likely have been much like other Nidic groups in terms of biology. The Elven and Nordic influences come much later, and the centuries of turmoil and contested fighting and oppression is what forms the Reach folk of the modern day, with a biology closer to the Bretons. However, the original Reach folk would not have the Elven-derived traits. The Reachmen themselves believe that their tribes dwelled within the caves of the Juadark Mountains long before elves and Nords fought over their lands, and this is by no means a far-fetched belief. One can easily imagine that bands of cave-dwelling or nomadic Nidic tribes inhabited the vast expanses between the Reach and the Rift. And remember, this is all talking about the early to middle Morethic era, which is before the Somerset Isles is claimed by the elves, before Crystal Tower and White Gold Tower, before Aelids, Falmer, and Dwemer. Interestingly, I think the religion of the Reachmen offers some valuable speculation about the earliest of Nidic tribe beliefs. The Reach folk are an isolate. Their geography has made them very hard to subdue permanently, and you should well know that they are Daedra worshippers. Their various clans have varying beliefs and patrons, but at the core of their shared beliefs, there are great spirits, and the most important of all is Hercene. Quickly, we must establish that at this time, there is no Aedra or Daedra distinction. No Auriel, no Finaster, no Shaw, no Kine, nor any of the Imperial Divines that themselves are a synthesis of Nordic and Elven gods. With no Nords and no Elves on Tamriel yet, religion was likely quite different, and I'd argue that Daedra would play a big part alongside things like Star Worship and so on. It's speculation, of course, but I think of all the Daedric Princes, there is the most compelling evidence to say that Hercene played a big part. To the Reachmen, Hercene is the sovereign of the world of flesh, the lord of the arena, a god who taught them how to hunt, fight, and survive. And I would imagine that this belief is older than most, maintained since the earliest days of their hunter-gatherer lifestyles and before Nordic or Elven interference. I believe the needs of not only the Reach, but throughout Skyrim to the Rift, would have worshipped Hercene in some capacity. And it's not just the Reach folk, you can look at the Keptu tribe I mentioned prior. They too had great interactions with Hercene well into the First Era. During the Companions questline, you can discover that the Circle are werewolves, and there is a secret Underforge. Well, you may be given the quest to retrieve the totems of Hercene, and there is a book about them that says, quote, they date to a period when men could neither write nor speak, nor barely think. But the powers of blood of the beast were yet flowing strong among the selected. And simply from looking at these totems to her scene, you can see that they were of an ancient and primitive people. And I would argue that it was the Nidic hunter-gatherer tribes of Skyrim that fashioned these totems in reverence of her scene, arguably the most important deity for their lifestyle. The Reachmen of today also believe that lycanthropy is a blessing, and you can very well imagine that as a Nidic tribesman equipped with only stone spear and hide, the ability to transform into a werewolf or a werebear would be an unbelievable advantage when facing mammoths, giant bears, saber cats, and who knows what else could have walked the lands of this primal Skyrim. At the very least, I think it's reasonable to say that the early Nidic tribes of Skyrim and the Reach worshipped Hercene in some capacity, but perhaps this applies even more broadly, and perhaps to Daedra worship as a whole. For example, the Kothringi were clearly aware of Clavicus Vile when they made that coin dated back to the early Merethic era, and without the anti-Daedra ideal of the Oldmer, the possibility of widespread Daedra worship is even greater. While we have spoken mostly of humans, there were also likely goblins and or reeklings that inhabited Skyrim at this time, likely functioning similar to how they do today. Perhaps Nidic tribes interacted with them, perhaps as allies, more likely as enemies if I'm being honest, but it's fun to ponder. So in summary, 
Prehistoric Skyrim was filled with megafauna and tribes of hunter-gatherers that praised Hercene for his guidance and lessons so that they may have successful hunts. And they used totems and ceremonies and begged for the blessings of the beast so that they may have the prowess to survive these harsh lands. But as time went on, as elves came, and then Nords, well, Nidic culture was on the decline. And arguably, by the modern day, only the Reach folk maintain a culture with any semblance of similarity to the earliest Nidic peoples of Skyrim. Well, that's my theory, at least. What do you think?